But a foolish mistake. Just a head coming here and no feet. It's a bit more concerning. Potentially empty. Out pops the lamb. Now, see, you'll just see me here going around checking sheep. As the lads were throwing the meal to the sheep there, I was going around in underneath the sheep, checking them for a bag. With those few empties, Parik is coming to scan them. And a few years ago, before I started vaccinating for Toxo and Enzo, I made a foolish mistake, we'd say. But sheep farming every day really is a school day. What happened was I was feeding uh, hoggets in the shed here, feeding the meal, feeding them silage. They were getting fat. I was thinking they're, um, these sheep are going to have big lambs. At that time, I had tucked the rams out after uh, two cycles, so 34, 35 days I took the rams out. We had ran over the time, so I had fed the sheep in the shed the whole time and no lambs in them. They had slipped the lambs or aborted from scanning up to the point that they were housed and I missed them. Now, it was an expensive mistake because I was feeding those sheep in the shed when they could have gone to the factory. They were all fat enough to go ages before that. Cullios are at good money at the minute. So we've marked a few here. We're going to pull them out. We'll get them all penned up. Parik is coming in the afternoon. We'll run through them and see. If anything is empty, they're going straight to the factory. Good prices. Got very good money for those ram lambs that went, those 20 ram lambs. Came into almost 3,800 for 20 head. And some of them were light enough, so happy days. When the demand is there, we might as well kill them. Three sheep here. The one in at the back is the sheep that went down in that thousand video, the one that had uh, was low in calcium. The calcium lifted her, she was fine, but I just found she was a little bit sick of herself. So somebody had mentioned in the comments, get her outside the grass and a bit of meal in the field. The other one was the same, this back one, carrying a single, she was housed for about 10 days and went down in the pen, low in calcium. Give her 60 milliliters of calcium, she came up, she was fine. So I said, bit of company for the other one, we let them out. They're quite happy out in the field. This other one here, it's a bit more concerning, we'll say. You'll see she definitely has no lamb in her. She's thin, she's empty looking, but more worrying, she hadn't eaten. She wasn't going for a meal. She had a dirty, kind of a watery scour, and I just didn't like the looks of it. So I got her out of the shed. I put her in the field with these two. Now, I checked her temperature. She had a temperature of 40.3, which would be very high for a sheep. So I'm not sure what you go off. I had a vet here said eating over 39.3 is high, generally over 40 is very ill. Now, last year I had a touch of salmonella in the shed, a dirty mess, scoury, high temperatures, aborting, all the symptoms of it. I was a bit worried about it, maybe it was appearing again. So, got her out. The most important thing I think you can do if you have a problem in the shed, whether it's, whether it's an abortion, or a dead sheep or dead lambs, just get them out of the shed, clear them out, because it's a good way of spreading the disease. So she's out in the field. I injected her with antibiotics yesterday. Uh, I'm just gonna inject her again here. Uh, I had no problem catching her yesterday. She was very sick, but you'll see here, it's gonna be a job to catch her again now. Or maybe I'll just mention here, I have a few more students starting today. I have them for the week. So I've Keen back. Keen's gonna be with me for, how long Eight actually weeks. are you here? Eight, Eight weeks. weeks, good man. Right, you'll be fairly familiar with the job then. Definitely. I have another man here. I have Peter, UCD student yeah. again, ag science student. Good man, you're welcome to Sheep Scale. Yeah, good yeah, it's good to have help. Have you any experience with sheep, Peter? Oh, no. Good man, well, shall we throw you in at the deep end then? <laughs> <laughs> we have a good start made already, so we'll keep that here. The boys can do the catching and injecting here. Um, yeah, as you see now, she's pretty, she's pretty mobile. She's not bad. That's the bite. A good strong gossip. Hard to beat the youth, as Robbie says. So into the neck there, Key, and you're familiar with this job. That's the job. Good man. 25 mil needle for this job. That's it. Yeah, she'll be fine now. So I 
but imagine the temperature as well down because she was very sick yesterday so we get these back out to the field we're definitely not going to put her back in the shed just in case it's anything contagious it's probably not ideal that she's mixing with the other two that have to lamb but you can't really leave a sheep on her own so we'll get her we'll get them back out to the field here now so a special delivery here of urea going to try to grow a bit of grass didn't get all that slurry out So it's urea, which is 46% nitrogen. Now, in the last video of housing them, I mentioned feet trouble and not looking after them, maybe when they're out in the field, it's quite hard to figure out which one is the sore foot. This is the first sheep, I, it's quite obvious, in the shed. Just gonna have a look at her and see what the story is. You can see her foot is up off the ground there. Struggling to get up, it's a little bit swelled. We'll just have a look at it and see. Probably give her a jag. I would imagine there is an infection in that, but we'll have a look at her here now. It's not foot rot, you kind of know by the smell of uh, foot rot, it's pretty distinctive and I think the word would be pungent, it's nasty stuff, but there's quite a bit of heat in that, when I feel it, it's very very hot, so she definitely needs an antibiotic, but there's no obvious um, foot rot, doesn't smell of it, but I can feel the heat compared to the other foot. It's definitely pretty hot. Right, so what's the course of action here? The first thing is Metacam, which is a painkiller under the skin. Just gonna give her two and a half milliliters because she's struggling a wee bit to walk here. Yeah. Next job is uh, oxytetracycline or alamycin or angiomycin. So the other job I'm going to do, because she's so foot, I'm just going to record her as a foot problem and if she's a repeat offender, uh, she can go. I generally don't keep sheep with feet trouble. So I can record it on the reader as being lame, that'll be recorded on her profile for life. So it's just interesting to keep an eye on that that her offspring maybe would do the same thing but it is pretty much hereditary especially if they're repeat offenders now you could get the odd sheep might get a jag of a thorn and potentially get an infection but if it's foot rot it's generally hereditary i'm just going to mark the leg as well so we can keep an eye on it to see that it improves so keep an eye on that and uh, See how she goes. Now, so one other sheep here with a bad back foot. She has a long toe, as you can see it there, but can't find the foot shears. Not something I use very often. I don't actually pair feet, but that toe could do with pairing. We'll just keep an eye on her. Gonna inject her, there's a lot of heat in it as well. Gonna inject her, Medicam again, and uh, angiomycin or oxytetracycline. So we'll give her that into the muscle and we'll mark her, record her, and we'll keep an eye on her. Keen, you're doing a great job holding her. <laughs> Fair play to you. Right, on to the next job. Now, so, went in for the lunch there. There was a sheep. Looked to be struggling a bit while we were heading off for the lunch. Kept an eye on, on the camera. There was two feet and a nose coming. I was just debating with the students, should we intervene? I said no. We leave her, let her do her own thing. and just all of a sudden out popped the lamb. So I think time is the secret in this job. Unless they're really pushing and straining and lying stretched out, that's generally when I intervene. But once I can see the presentation is right, I don't intervene if I can help it at all. So we have a lovely big lump of lamb here. Happy days. Torek, the scanner is just coming. I'm nervous. I have a feeling they're empty. I've checked the bags 
as we were feeding them. You've seen us at that this morning. We've the seven empties, plus a few other problem cases. I'm not sure what we'll face here. Scanlon could have been very good back in January, but what are we going to face today? We live in hope. It's a bit concerning, to say the least, that there's so many sheep potentially empty. We'll soon find out what's going on. The darker ones are ones that were in the shed. They're ones that I checked. You seen that earlier when we checked them at uh, feeding time to see there's not much of a bag on them. Just want to see what's going on. The ones that are a bit cleaner are the ones that scanned empty back in January. We just double checked them because the ram was running with them. We'll see what's going on. Parik will let us know what's happening. So we've an army of help here today. Now Parik has just said up here. The lads are going to keep them up to me. Uh, Parik is just telling me here there is some talk of maybe a poor start, some bad, bad yeah, start in some farms. Yes, yeah. for the first few days, Annie. But you always get that. Yeah, I suppose I've it's seen it myself a few abortions, but not too bad. Some of them I just wasn't sure. I just wanted you to double check them. Yeah, yeah, she's heavy in now. Lovely. Okay. Come on. Come on. I'll show you more detail in a small lamb game. They are too far gone to make any head or tail. Well, this, this is a good start. Now, I was very nervous that these sheep were empty, but Parik has given me good news that we're showing lambs here. Yeah. So she's empty. That's actually her pattern. Okay. Full blood. She was empty before. So she was, yeah. Yeah. So there's another one that was scanned empty, still empty. Okay, so there you go, it just kind of goes to show there's something not right with them. Yeah. Now we have a pregnancy here. You can nearly see a lamb because I marked her on the shoulder. She's not as far on as our colleagues, but she's still a hundred days. That's a cross section of a lamb there. See, that's the bottom of the lamb. Oh, yeah. That is the lamb there, roughly, but he's about a hundred days, hundred and five, ten days. Is there because a speaking with the top? Oh, it's probably some of his limbs, yes. Mm -hmm. If we had ones a day, he'd fire 90 days, extract your limbs and all very easy, but that lamb, that's single lamb there, I would think. Yeah. So we still... I still leave her up there, because you know that she's... Yeah, big. good man, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll know her, but you again, know, she's... I, uh, the further very... from the business end, I tend to mark them, so that David knows that if she's marked here, she should be an alien to group, even right, though he's yeah. rattled on them. Yeah. It's a good way for me to know what's going on. No, that's a big, big lamb. There's no way of knowing what's going on there. You can just make out there's a body there and that's it, is that? What do you think you are there? 100 and something days. Yeah. A lamb there, but again, he's just too big. Yeah. He's about 100, 105 days. You wouldn't normally see any much more detail than that. We scan it if I 80 days naturally. Yeah. And they are smaller, you see far more detail. Uh, yeah, probably, yeah, okay. Now, Horik has just finished scanning here. We'll chat to him in a minute. But I just want to show you something here. So we have a sheep, that sheep that lamb, we have a head coming here. We can get you a look at that. Head coming and no feet. So I'm just going to get the vet students to have a look at that. I want to get Parik loaded and away. So it's a good experience for the vet students for a problem case like this. Have you led her up to the corner there, girls? Do you know she's less than time to get away? Have you a gel? Uh, Niall's come up to get her. Yeah. Have you any feet there at all? So we have just a head coming here and no feet. Yeah. So it is uh, a problem case, and what happens there in that instance is the head usually swells up too much. Unless you have a really small lamb, it's practically impossible to get a lamb out with just a head and no feet. Are they back? Any feet there at all? Um, I think they're well back now. Yeah. yeah. It could be in under the belly like. He's quite a big lamb as well. Yeah. Like he's... Let's see if I... I have... Right, I feel one of the feet, but... He's already very tight against her pelvis, so yeah. she's quite small. So. Yeah. Well, the best thing you could do in that instance is... Push the head right back yeah. in. Right. Now it can be tricky, but because well, she's above her head, maybe. Yeah, yeah, not a bad. Here, not you, a bad. You come on in, have a feel. So Niall's just putting a bit of uh, the gel around the lamb's head. 
we're going to slip the head back inside and try and lift the legs. Lucky enough, she's fairly opened up. Yeah. It's a little bit easier on the second lamb too because she will have opened up even more. Second lamb is over here. That's him over there. I have one leg down here. Good man. Can you get a second one? That's the second one now. Lovely. Good big feet by the looks of it. Have you the head there as well? Uh, yeah, it's kind of skin. Sometimes what can happen is when you push it back in, especially if the head is swelled, it's quite a big head. It's very hard to get the head along with the feet back into the canal. So if the head was really swelled, sometimes what I do is I'll rope the head because mm. you can give it a wee tug yeah. along with the feet. Is the head coming with it? It's kind of, as I say, kind of caught now. Is it like flying back or something? It's just not coming. It, the nose should be basically back a couple of inches from... It's kind of down if you get, the nose is down a bit. In between the legs? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's it, yeah, very good. I can see the nose starting to bulge out here. Lovely job. No, I'd have just squeezed the, yeah, squeeze the mucus off the nose uh, when he comes out like that. He's fine though, usually when he takes that first gasp, he should be fine. That's it. Good man, fair play to you. Right, that's the first problem case we've encountered in the lamb and shed. Happy days. Just want to have a chat to Parik here before he goes. Um, he's loaded up here and ready to roll. All action here. The scanning is done, Parik, a lot better than I had hoped. Yeah, finished very well. Ah, yeah, yeah, finished very well. The few I had picked out are actually in lamb. I was nervous, but thankfully this man tells me they're in lamb. And it's a good year to be in lamb because if they're not in lamb, they'd be going down the road. Ah, that's right, <laughs> that's right. Three of the seven that were empty have scanned in lamb too, so that's a little bit of a bonus. But uh, you're seeing a little bit of abortion on some of the Yeah, lamb initially, stuff. yes. Seems yeah. to be a bit of a problem about there the yeah. first few days. But you know what, that had to start. Yeah. I, I had one or two. And hopefully myself. it'll settle down. Yeah, so, yeah it usually rears its head early it's on. Start. Yeah. yeah, but uh, we'll hope for the best. You're finished yeah. scanning now. Practically, I just have a couple of hundred yule lambs to do here and there, higgly bigglies. Yeah. The crate's nearly ready for another, another over. overhaul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, good On man. a man. Are you not going to your retirement yet, no, will you? No. Fair play to you, Power. Thanks, man. David. Thank Thanks you. very much. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. All we'll, the see, best. we'll see you next time.